Once again, we had another mass shooting in America. This video could have been produced at any time in the last few years, and the information would be insanely and sadly similar. This time, in Parkland, Florida, an 18-year-old anti-Muslim neo-Nazi with a disturbing history legally purchased an AR-15, went to the school he was expelled from, where two armed police officers stayed on site daily and shot 17 people dead in their own high school. Immediately, we hear the choruses that we're all too familiar with. It's too soon to politicize this, and our thoughts and prayers go out to the victims and their families. Thoughts and prayers don't make change. The victims' families are literally asking us to politicize this so we can actually make change so it doesn't happen again. So, let's talk about finding some common ground so we can begin to take some real action. But first, we need to debunk the numerous myths that are floating around about common sense gun laws and what they will and won't do. One, it's the violent video games and movies. Nope, the same violent video games and movies sold here are sold all around the world and we're the only first world country with this gun violence and mass shooting epidemic. Two, it's the medicines people are taking for mental health. Many of the shooters were on psychotropic drugs. Well, 100% of the shooters were wearing clothes, but the clothes or the drugs didn't kill anyone, so what's your point? Those same exact psychotropic drugs are prescribed to people all over the world, including nearly 79 million here in the US alone. Speaking of strong prescription drug control, Every Schedule One drug purchase requires you to go to a highly specialized doctor who does a full evaluation on you to determine if you're even eligible for a certain drug. Then, should you be deemed eligible, you're given a prescription, aka a license, that you must take to a pharmacy, dispensed by a licensed pharmacist, where you have to show a government ID and your every purchase is tracked in a national database. You're only allowed to get a refill in a set amount of time, so yeah, Let's actually make guns more regulated like psychotropic drugs. Three, it's a mental health issue. Yes, it is partly a mental health issue. Combine that with our lax gun laws and then you have the situation we're in now where we're allowing people with serious mental health problems to have easy access to guns. In fact, the only mental health issue that prevents you from buying a gun is if you are involuntarily committed to a mental institution. Literally, Someone can threaten to shoot up a school, the police can find that there's no direct credible threat, and that same person can go and legally purchase an AR-15 tomorrow. And in most states, that person can buy their AR-15 at a gun show without even having to show an ID. But since we're on the topic, why don't we increase our budget to get people help with their mental health? I'm glad to hear you're ready to invest our taxpayers' dollars in healthcare because it seemed to be a big no-no just a few years ago. Additionally, all other countries have the same rate of mental health diagnoses and don't have the gun violence problem or mass shootings problems that we do. Four, criminals don't follow laws. And yet, we have laws anyway. With that ridiculous argument, why have laws at all? Since you're saying criminals don't follow laws, apparently you're meaning that we should make it easy and legal for them to get access to semi-automatic weapons designed for the military? And let's not forget that the Parkland shooter wasn't a criminal until he decided to shoot up a high school. In fact, most mass shooters aren't criminals until they commit crimes by carrying out mass shootings. Five, we need armed guards in school. Well, Parkland had two armed police officers employed at the school. It did nothing to stop it. If two highly trained police officers aren't enough, then how many are? Five per school, 10 per school, one in every classroom? And who's gonna pay for all these armed guards when the schools can't even afford pencils and notebooks for the students? Six, people just need to report suspicious activity. Yeah, hey, 911, I'd like to report an 18 year old kid who has anti Muslim stuff and pictures of dead frogs and guns that he legally purchased on his Instagram. Oh, wait, being a creepy <laughs> isn't illegal? But I was told that reporting it would stop gun violence. Seven, if not guns, it'll be something else. They'll just find a way to do it anyway. Well, let me know the last time somebody killed 17 people in a school in under three minutes with a bat or a knife. I'll wait. But you know what? Let's look at other countries because if what you're saying is true, surely they have much higher rates of murder by other weapons since they enacted gun control, since you're saying people will just find a way to do it anyway, right? Oh. By the way, Russia just had a mass stabbing. And guess what? Casualties? Zero. Eight. We need to arm teachers. The teachers overwhelmingly don't want this. Additionally, we already have over 300 million guns in this country 
and the gun violence has only gone up. So your argument is really that more guns is the answer because the 300 million that we have isn't enough? Further, it's been proven over and over and over again that more armed people only leads to chaos and confusion when the actual police arrive, and it rarely stops anything at all anyway. A gun rights group in Texas tried an exercise recreating a newspaper mass shootings, but this time they armed some of the employees. The armed people were unable to stop the mass shooting. 10. It's how kids were raised today. Well, you may have had a leg to stand on if mass shootings were a new thing for America, but they've been going on for decades. And maybe you'd have something there if it was just teenagers that were shooting mass amounts of people. But the average age of a mass shooter in America is 35 years old. And the Las Vegas shooter was 64 years old. We need to put politics aside and put lives front and center. Currently, over 80% of Americans are in favor of stronger gun laws. Nobody serious is talking about taking everyone's guns away. We need to come together and sit down and figure this out from a multi-pronged angle. It's going to need to address mental health and gun laws. This isn't a Republican issue. This isn't a Democrat issue. This is an American citizen issue. And it's up to each and every single one of us to stop this from happening again and again and again. It is totally within our power. Every other first world country in the world has come up with a way to stop this, and we haven't yet. It's well past time that we do. Let's come together, find common ground, and tackle the issue. We owe it to ourselves, we owe it to our country, and we owe it to our children.